Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine Sunday evening? Ready to talk some inner Miami football? Me and Ed are. So let's uh, let's get right to it. Every, uh, it should be a fun night tonight. We'll get to your uh, chats as always. And uh, there's voicemail available if you want to do that as well. But of course, as as I mentioned, I don't do this by myself. Everybody say hello to everybody's favorite uncle, Uncle Ed. How you doing, Ed? Peter Brown, here I am, man. Oh, man, that was, it seemed, uh, I think I was texting you that well, it looks like we're going to win. And then, boom, we tied, they tied us. So, uh, enter Miami, Tata, we're going to get to that in a bit. Yeah, yeah, um, there's, you know, a lot of people calling for his head already. So, we'll get into that a little bit. If that's a, maybe a little bit jumping the gun and things like that. Rumors of what Xavi, uh, it, you know, stuff like that. But that's probably all just rumors. But we could we could get into anything you guys want to discuss tonight. Of course, big game coming up on Wednesday against Monterey, so we'll have to talk about that as well. And uh, and and all your chats. So you guys want to direct the show a little bit? Do so. Let's get active in the chat. But before we do, um, do all that, let's say thank you to a few sponsors. Start off with. Caneswear and Caneswear's, uh, they actually this weekend had a great hat sale. If you follow us on Twitter, you know, I retweeted their, 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 their tweet, um, on X. And I guess you have to say we X'd it. I X'd it, right. They had a, a, a buy one hat and get one 50% off for any hat. I mean, you like, you could mix and match. You can get an inner Miami hat, one Miami Dolphin hat, one Panthers hat, one University of Miami hat, whatever you want. So great deals always at Caneswear. Look at that wall of Messi right there. Such a messy wall. <laughs> great, uh, you know, availability of all the good merchandise. And like I said, best prices in town. So go check them out at Caneswear.com if it's too far for you to drive in Davie, Florida. And there's a code, Peter Rain, FMTV10. FMTV10, yeah. If you want to do it online, go FMTV10 and you will get a discount. Awesome, Oops. Peter Brown. Well, he said you jumped the gun there. I jumped the gun. Got, well, uh, it's because it's I, it's from last week. <laughs> last <laughs> well, if you want to buy or sell your property, you got to talk to Mia Rodriguez. Mia is the goat of all realtors in South Florida. She's on TV. She speaks three languages. She's just all over the place. If you guys want to uh, maybe appear on her show, go to. Uh, uh, you know, contact her for sure. And, um, you know, she might even appear on her show. So, you know, WhatsApp her, send her a message and, uh, you too can be on TV. Me All Rodriguez. right. And finally, Peter you, wanna, you want to, uh, Man, build a house. H-O-B. Yeah. A hob for you. H O B hands on builders. Your custom home builder, we build your dreams to reality. So, you know, you've got a plot of land. You want to build your own custom home. They're the people to go talk to. You want to renovate your home. They're the people to talk to. So go uh, touch base with this family-owned business, 833-267-8305. And, and you know, Peter, uh, the uh, uh, our very own bear, Marco Eloso Donoso, is going to have his own man cave done by them so that's going to be a cool little project so we gotta um you know uh show that one off once they start yeah start absolutely doing- we got to get some photos of, of the before and after and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so uh, also you want to uh drop us a call 786-474-4435 we got one voicemail on on deck already from uh our old friend striker fett oh look at that argentinian and so he's always thinking of messy but uh, mm-hmm. Ed, let's say hello to some people in the chat. Let's do it, Peter. But you know, once again, I forgot my phone over there <laughs> on right. the other side of uh, Football <clears throat> Miami TV Cafe. The first person I see in the chat is claiming he is first, and that is oh. Tank. Tank seven two one says first. All right, Tank. B King is in the house as well, talking about the pitch invaders. We should talk about that a little bit. Louis Rodriguez is here. Welcome, Louis. Good old Louis. Sports shorts, as always. The best photographer in in Inter Miami, Chris oh. Arjun, is here. Lamar Matz, welcome. I like what Chris is saying here about the pitch invaders. 
Blame Neville for the two pitch invaders. <laughs> the real 506 has some thoughts on Noah Allen. We'll get to that. Yeah. Daniel Rodriguez. El Pelon is here as well. Uh -huh. Rome. Tata is untouchable. He is part of the messy package. Wow. All right. I don't know. And that's it for... Oh, wait. Here's one more. Black story and some Roman numerals from Morocco. Wow. Nice. Nice. Oh, wait. Mike V's popping in. Now, well, where they go? Thought some uh, on Campana. So... Campana, uh, another injury, another injury there in that game. Yeah, Peter, and it's just, uh, I, I got to say it's a little suspect. Um, I, I don't think he's happy with the way things are turning out there uh, with uh, Inter Miami. He hasn't played the past two games. Uh, he started this one just out of necessity because we didn't have anybody else in the resting players for the Monterrey game, which probably meant he wasn't going to play that game anyway or he would be, would have been on the bench and probably wouldn't have played um there's uh some rumors that he may be on his way out in the summer because he's not happy with the amount of playing time that he's getting when he's been on the field he's scored goals he's done assists um he's just not getting the time that i think he he wants and but needs to be on the let's, ecuador yeah uh, let's touch national. on what mike v said because you kind of touched on some of this mike v had said he's been a huge proponent of Campana since he got here I've always felt he has been treated unfairly, like you said. Uh, but now I just can't keep justifying him getting hurt. He goes too hard all the time. I mean, but that that's what I like about Campana. I like that he goes too hard all the time. I want that. But we do have to talk about these injuries that keep popping up. You know, we've yeah. got... Um, I think I can show this. Well... Where, where'd you get you? that what's that is that the the updated list no this is from this is the list that was um from uh you know before the game it's not gonna be updated you know you would imagine coming soon you're gonna see on this list campana right and, and potentially two. another hamstring right because that's what we think it could be that's another another hamstring, you know, and so that's sus. You know, you got to start wondering. And I was having conversations with uh, some of our friends in in the parking lot about uh, all the hamstring injuries or just all the crop of injuries uh, specifically. And and one of our friends, um, friend of Julio's, was was throwing out the idea that he thinks we need a bubble. Because the training out in the elements too much is too hard on these players. Um, my thought is training in these elements is what makes them tougher potentially than the visiting team. You're, that's your advantage, you know. Yeah. But you do have to question we've because this team has changed their you know staff for you know over the oh. years, right? But we've always had these problems, and now it's just the worst. I mean, are they training these people too hard? We, everybody's got a knee or a hamstring. Everybody gets a hamstring. You want a hamstring injury, Ed? You got there. it. I'm getting one too. We're all getting hamstrings. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I I'm with you on that, Peter Brown. Uh, they just either they're, they're going too hard or, or what's up? Guy ever, what's up, bud? Yeah, it's just uh, – it's just – there's something suspect, something in the water that everybody is is uh uh you know uh getting injured. Uh Mike V feels that uh because Campana isn't getting the minutes, so he's getting going to get hurt if he goes too hard. His coaches should advise him to turn down the amps. But he oh he he but he plays at eleven. He doesn't know how to turn it down. He cranks it up to eleven. Yeah. Because he wants to wait, show wait. off. He does, wants, any, wait, he wants, does anybody get that reference? Come on. Spinal Tap reference, Ed? <laughs> Not many people. Uh, you know you they're know, making a Spinal what? Tap too. They're making a Spinal oh. Tap too. They they're all must be like 80 years old, though. Is it like a remake or something? Uh, 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 new characters? 
No, I think the basic concept might be something like these these old rockers are kind of like down and out and broken. They need to kind of get back together just to make some money or something like that, right? I mean, uh, yeah, they probably like, hate each other. You know, like your your classic like rock and roll story, like so many. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Black story uh, thinks that he thinks it's the opposite that they don't train well, and that the hamstring injuries usually are from the lack of training. You see, I don't necessarily, I don't claim to be a coach or a trainer. I don't know what causes hamstring injuries other than maybe you didn't stretch properly. Um, But it just, it is, it is a uh, pandemic, an epidemic. It's a, it's a, it's a demic. At at this rate, it is a pandemic, Peter. It's a demic of some sort. Um, But, but anyways, what were you, what, what, what you, you, uh, you, you, um, watched the game from the comfy confines of your house. So you, you, um, you know, it's a different view. I mean, we, we, in the stadium, sometimes you miss things. You get the vibe and the fun and all that, but sometimes you miss things. So this, this game in Colorado, what, what were your thoughts on, on, well, let's, let's, let's start here, Ed. What were your thoughts on, oops, I went away on this, um, starting 11. Well, obviously, um, you know, um, uh, Tata is trying to rest his players for the big game uh, in Monterrey, which is, you know, an uphill battle because, you know, there's over 50,000 people that are going to be in that stadium, all of them supporting Monterrey. Hey, you saw you saw the game on Wednesday. Here in Miami, there were tons of uh, Monterrey fans, and we had one right, you know, breathing down our neck the whole game, yelling and uh, <laughs> You know, poor, poor wife of the guy was just like rolling her eyes the whole time. She's you know, like, sorry. Yeah, she's like, oops, this is this is my husband. Kind of, kind of, probably what my wife and your wife d- would do or something. Even even you though wait, yours is more. My wife is generally the loudest one. Complaining about players and stuff. Somebody. True. She's but, generally, yeah. she gets into it sometimes too much where I got to kind of tone her down a little bit. Yeah, that's true. But uh, no, I mean, um, so obviously that lineup was is you know a reflection of that uh, of the that game that's coming up with Monterrey. Uh, you know, the all fantastic four, uh, the whole all all four of them were out resting. I mean, our our it's funny because they mentioned it on on the on the broadcast on Apple TV that you know we that that um, bench was like you know incredible. You know that <laughs> the best bench in Major League Soccer uh, in that moment, but. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, like I said, uh, Campana up front was, you know, you, you could tell he was going to be there. Borgelin, his positioning was weird, man. Well, I, I, I saw some people talking about that in that with Borgelin, you know, they put they mainly, you know, had him play kind of as a winger. And that's just not his natural position. They should have played, you know, with two up top, play like a 4-4-2, you know, put two on the top. And that way he, he'd be a little more of it in his position. And maybe, um, yeah, bring back Afonso or maybe Campana also bring out because he could hold the ball better. But Borgelin had a couple opportunities where he lost the ball because he's just not that good with the ball. He's just your point man up top, you know, that's there to head the ball. That's his forte, you know. So maybe Afonso could have been back there, Campana and Borgelin up front, like you said, with, with the with the two forwards or whatever. But, yeah, it's just like, you know, it, it, I'm no expert. I'm no coach or whatever. Marco, you know, uh, the bear, uh, Marco Eloso, he was – you know, uh, sending me messages complaining the whole time. He's like, "Oh man, I can't wait for the Saturday for the the uh, Monday show because I'm going to let Tata know. You know, he's he's wrong. He's like my my twenty over twenty years of experience as a FIFA um, you know PlayStation coach. You know, um, <laughs> gives me the right to complain because I would never do that. Never bring back Borgelin. You know, he keeps putting Allen as a as a defender in the back as a center, center defender." A center defender. Why, for God's sake, he's not a center defender. And then, and then like Louis says, Avalez is a midfielder. No, he's not capable of handling the midfield properly. I mean, no. once in a while he looked okay. But yeah, I saw that. I'm like, what are they doing? You know, there's there's got to be somebody else that was better suited for that. I mean, um, Kramoski, uh, maybe. I mean, he's back. Um, I understand resting Busquets. I get that. Um, yeah. I understand re- resting Gomez. So I understand resting all these players because they're clearly saying that the Champions Cup is way more important 
than than um, you know MLSs and something about that actually. I was reading um, a little article in World Soccer Talk. So our buddy the Gaffer over there has a site, a really good site, <clears throat> and they were uh, basically mentioning that Apple may not be happy right now because Messi has not been playing very many of their games. They want they paid a certain amount of money with the anticipation and helping to they're helping to pay for Messi's salary, right? They yeah. they they have an anticipation of seeing him on their screen and they don't care about the Champions Cup. Like we the club Tata mm-hmm. might care about the cup, but they care about the, M- the you know, the MLS games, you know, not CONCACAF games so right. and that, and I found that interesting too what was it on Friday when they released of players that were going to be available um I don't recall them ever doing that before and to me that's just a marketing ploy to sell tickets and tell people look 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 guys he, he's here he's on the bench I mean there's no guarantee he's gonna play but he's he's available Messi right right no no yeah that was a, definitely a ploy I mean the there must have been a lot of people that probably just weren't watching anymore the you know, there's some way that you must detect, you know, the how many people are getting on Apple TV or, or you know, even in the stadium. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people, they didn't fill up the stadium for the Monterrey game. Of course, the prices were hiked up. Uh, a lot of people complaining, like all these Mexican players, they were chanting, you know, uh, Messi's afraid. Um, you know, it, it was just, uh, they, they definitely trying to make their, their, their money back, I guess you would say, by trying to... Uh, say that Messi's going to play the next game. Yeah, I mean they're they're definitely yeah. I think they they realize that you're gonna you're gonna charge a, a bunch of money and you want yeah as much as I mean they want to make you got to look at that balance between selling an expensive ticket or filling your stadium, which is more important to you, right? And this probably finding that balance of a way to sell all your tickets and still you know make your money maybe yeah. you know raking us over the coals isn't isn't the best idea you know turning off fans because they can't afford it maybe not a great idea but anyways we can go that's a whole another um thing we can complain about hey look who's here maybe it's because i called him out the other day esteban dino's uh, here look at that i called him out during our um uh you know when i was live streaming because uh, i hadn't seen him in a while yeah he kind of disappeared on us welcome back well, which by the way, I didn't see a live stream. Uh, you, you know, I wasn't there, so you took the day off. It looked like I sure did. You got nothing. So, no you vlog nothing. either. Here, here was my thought too. I was like, nobody cares about Colorado, and uh, so, and, and 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 as far as that streaming goes, it was not part of the plan. I did not plan on doing that. But when you had those kind of seats, it just kind of. Let the camper, camera keep rolling. Just let it roll. But I, I'll be honest. I watched some of it back. And I know people appreciate it. And we're going to get to a voicemail in just a minute because he touches on this. Um, I know some people appreciated me live streaming the game. Um, but it was difficult for me to watch just the few minutes that I watched. Because as good as it looks when I'm holding my phone on my TV, it's like shaky. It's not good. I'm sometimes showing the field too much. I'm like, you know, I'm like... I wouldn't want to watch that, but I guess if you're maybe in another country or something like that and you don't have access, it was it was a nice substitute. But I was like, I mean, I think I, I like that people like it, but I, I wouldn't watch it. <laughs> right. No, but like like you said, there's a lot of people that weren't aren't able to watch, so they definitely yeah. would tune in. It's not something we do all the time because there's always a chance that they're going to cut you off, which uh, for some reason they didn't. I think if it would have been on Apple, they would have cut us off quick. And well, and that's one world, one goal who was on there watching it with us. So she loved it. Peter has a one off. It was fun. Don't do it for the Apple games, though. Yeah, maybe she's right. Maybe do it for those more big of event uh, off Apple or something like that. Every once in a while, make it fun. But I think part of what makes it fun, too, is even you, you, you know, you could have it on your phone and still watch the game because it's just the commentary with the fans. You know, there's yeah. the chat, whether it's me talking or or the other fans talking amongst themselves. So nice. Esteban, is. Esteban appreciate it because he says he lives in Hialeah. <laughs> is that he's spelling it phonetically for me so I can say it? I know how yeah. to say Hialeah. 
I've lived here my <laughs> whole life. I know. <laughs> I know. How. I used to live fairly close to Hialeah. Anyways, you know. Yes. Um, so, yeah, Peter, I think uh, the, uh, you know, you, you had the lineup earlier. Um, we didn't have much of a choice, I guess, because of all the other players that were there. Um, some of the players that, you know, Borgerland was playing out of position. Second half, he was better. Um, uh, who else? Aviles, definitely. Yeah, he, yeah I would have. What I would have done is, you know, when uh, Busquets showed up, put Aviles, bring him back, take Allen out. Because, I don't know, I just don't think. I'm not a fan that, anymore of Allen. Not a central defender, man. And Tata keeps insisting. I don't know why he's he's I'm, so obsessed with the, with the fact that he thinks that he's a center defender when he's not. Louis uh, says, uh, Tata is completely improvising a lot here with many injuries. And that's the thing is there's, there's, a, there's definitely people out there complaining, calling for Tata's head. And it sounds like Marco might be one of them. Uh, but oh, yeah. with all those injuries, you got to cut the guy some slack where we can complain is how when he makes the substitutions and makes maybe the wrong substitutions at times or the the not so much the players that are available but where he puts them right so you know Avalez putting him there probably not the best idea maybe there was somebody else you could have put there uh you know not not doing not playing in a 442 in this scenario or or maybe Borgelin wasn't the right guy but you know whatever the situation is but maybe looking at a different formation. So those are the yeah. things we can yell at him for. But as far as the players that are available, you know, I, I've seen some people online just like, you know, yelling and screaming at him. Like, but a lot of those people don't fully understand the, the rules of the league and they think you could just go and buy any other player that you want and you can't. Yeah, like Ruiz was also, you know, in that, in that position, you, you know, another improvisation with Ruiz later on when he brought in Cello. He, uh, Cello took over that position. They put Avilis up front, I mean, up higher. And, uh, but, you know, Ruiz also, you know, was basically the guy that everybody's blaming because his uh, red card led to the other two, you know, goals almost immediately. So at least the, the you know, a couple minutes after is when they, 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 uh, they scored a goal. They tied it. Oh, was, did they tie it? Well, how, how, yeah, I think it, they tied it, right? I what don't remember. Me Monterey game. Oh, yeah, the Monterey game, yeah. That's the one I was Yeah, that's about. where you got the red cards. There you go. And of course he played this game, but Right, but that it doesn't one doesn't have any impact on the other. So Yeah. Um Fra Francisco Garcia says Tata's part of Messi's contract. I mean, it's not quite like that. But they definitely did bring in Tata to please Messi, but but there are rumors that uh, you know, they they've talked to, to Xavi and Messi's closer to Xavi, but I don't you know, I don't buy it. Um Caesar, our old buddy Caesar, who's who's got a voicemail, I got to get to, says we need to recruit Scaloni because he molds tactics that work best with Messi. Here's the thing, though, that you know, when you have this many injuries, I don't know if anybody's going to like make us a winner. There, yeah. the problem is there is such a huge, and this is common problem in MLS everywhere. There's such a a drop off between the 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 one percenters, the top. And everybody else, you know, so, you know, your, your haves and your have nots, right. Your, right. your, your messies and your, and your, uh, Afonso's right. Or your, um, you know, Noah Allen and, and, you know, players like that. Some of these players are just coming up from the two team or some of these players that play regularly on the two team because they're not getting minutes with the first team. Those guys, yeah. I mean, I think it was reported are making like around, you know, maybe less than a thousand a week. You know, in some cases, uh, somebody had posted something about that. And then, you know, so there's such a disparity that it's it's and that's part of the problem with the salary cap issues that we have in MLS. And we kind of talked about that with some of the uh, Monterey fans after the game. I start at least I did. I think you were talking to somebody else that, you know, they could spend as much as they want while we can't. So there's that such that big gap like our players like Ruiz who kind of screwed things up for us in that Monterey game would never be good enough to play for Monterey. Right. But we have to play with players like that. And he has promise, but you know, he's not ready to, to, to be that star level player yet to get the kind of 
uh, playing time he's getting. But we don't have a choice. I mean, that's kind of the the way the the, the system is. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna. Uh, we're obviously gonna play. Um, I don't know if Messi's gonna start the next game. I would imagine so against Monterrey. We got to come out with everything. Uh, basically, uh, Luis Suarez is nice and rested, so you know he's probably going to be starting. We don't know if uh, Campana is going to be back, so you know it's it's a mystery. Alfonso's another one that's hurt. Uh, that's another mystery if he's if these guys are going to be coming back. And uh, you know, I, I guess our our um, replacement forward is going to be Borjolin. Uh He looked like I said he didn't look good in the first half. Second half, he played a little bit better once Messi was there. He, uh, there he was. You know, Messi was distributing the blow, the ball, the ball a lot better, and he just, uh, you know, Messi's just, you know, incredible man. When he gets in there and he, he just started doing all the right things and got us, you know, on the board and and everybody's level just got so much better. Uh, but they just, you know, one mistake towards the end. Yeah, know, and, and that's the, that's that's what we always do, right? Right. So, but I but, think that you know they they expected, uh, you know. These games, uh, they they were basically sacrificed. Uh, they they thought me, you know, that there was a possibility that we could lose them or at least tie them, um, you know, and and or they thought that we had a chance with the players that we had uh, to to get the victories. But obviously, that doesn't happen. Injuries again. It's just you know we're just uh, not having the best of luck, uh, Peter Brown. Yeah, I mean, but they clearly prioritized the Champions Cup. So, you know, cl- cl- obviously it didn't go our way on, on Wednesday. But this 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 weekend's game, they weren't putting any priority on that. I mean, it was Messi came into that game not to come, in my opinion, not to be the hero, not to win the game, but to get minutes so that he's ready for Wednesday. I think that I think this for him was just a scrimmage just to get just to get fit match fit. Make sure his hamstring's good to go for that Wednesday game. So, hey, Ed, why don't we why don't we go to a voicemail and then maybe we can start talking a little bit about uh, what's coming up with Monterey. Let's do it. It's time for your voicemail. Hello. Hey guys, this is uh, Caesar's Hacker Fett. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, brother, for streaming live the Monterey match. Um, you didn't have to, uh, it was greatly appreciated. Um, it sucks that we lost two to one. Now we got a, a big hump, a big hurdle on the away game at home, at their home. So it's going to be tough. Um, unfortunately, I don't have high hopes that we'll, we'll win. Um, but we'll see. Secondly, tonight's match against Colorado Rapids. Um, we got the two, two to one in the second half within, uh, two minutes. I believe Messi hit, scored 58th and then Alfonso on the 60th. We were ahead two to one and then as uh, usual, Miami tradition, into Miami tradition, we gave up balls, counterattacks, and then they scored. Uh, unfortunately, Inter Miami is not a competitive team without Messi and the other three, four guys. Hey, you know, it's, um, Messi's not going to play every single game. He was out for weeks and weeks. He finally came in for the second half. He should have been on there the whole game, but it is what it is. I know it's still early in the season, but still, um, we need to do much, much better. All right, guys. Later. That's true. All right. Thank you. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, I mean, um, it's uh, it's going to be a, a tough over there in Monterrey. Uh, they've got a, a pretty good team. I think they they lost their their game uh, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, against Cruz Azul. Uh, last time I saw, they were down two to one. I heard they lost. Okay, so they did lose. Um, That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, Last time I saw they were down to one. They also didn't play some of their players, so they're resting them up because they want to they want to get through to the next round, and they know that Messi's probably going to play the next game. So, you know, we're going to go out with everything. Um, Monterrey was just a team that they they basically dominated. They held on to the ball. That's something that we're used to doing. 
Uh, I imagine in Monterrey it's going to be a little bit more of the same. And uh, we just, uh, you know, Tata, this is what we're going to see. If Tata can make that team work, uh, get us a victory over there, uh, at least a tie, a two to two uh, tie would, would uh, you know, bring us through. We would, uh, you know, go through a, a two to one victory would, um, would, uh, well, what am I talking about? And we have to win two to one, <laughs> like two to two. What am I talking about? Yeah, we, we need to win two to one at least to tie the thing. To so tie, but out. tie. Yeah, we got to score two goals over there at least. Yeah, because they now scored two goals yeah. here. Yeah, we need to win. Uh, you know, there's no other way because they beat us. But we got to uh, win really three goals, you know, to be safe. You know, a, a three or a two zero is good enough, right? Because they don't. We they we score our two goals would uh, away goals would uh, outweigh their uh, two goals over here because we scored one goal. Yeah. So I think yeah I think a two zero is it I don't know if you guys don't agree with me yeah I don't tell yeah, I'm that. saying I'm thinking they scored two goals we scored if we scored two goals we're kind of even but you're right we did score one goal does that diminish one of the I don't I don't fully get how all that stuff works to be honest yeah. it does get complicated with those kind of rules but um, hey one thing here I just um, Bruno here is asking this question. Uh, Serious question. What's the point trying to focus and prove you're the best team in the continent when you haven't proved that you're the best in the country? Why is CONCACAF a bigger priority? I mean, well, I because would, yeah, go ahead. No, it's, it's because uh, that tournament could get you into the World Cup of, of uh, clubs. Um, so it's more prestige. You know, you're, you're playing against the Mexican teams, which, which are still better than the uh, Major League Soccer teams. There's also teams from other countries, but we all know that their levels, you know, below the Mexican um, uh, league right now. I think that you know, everybody could agree that the Mexicans are probably the best ones in in North America. So, you know, that's that's why it's a bigger deal. Yeah, you know, and there's a bigger prize pool. Um, from what I understand, it's somewhere around five million dollars uh, that you win. So there's that, and also I would say this too that I think, and I've said this before here. This team is built for short tournaments because of the age of the players and forget about just them because our young players are getting hurt too. With all the injuries and the age of the players, you know, I think we're built for a short tournament because there's no guarantees that any of these guys can play week in and week out, but they might be able to, like they did with the league's cup last year, pull together a month straight and, and, and win something. Right. So I think that's the other reason, too, is is just because of with so many older players. Yes, they're great players, but they can't play every game. We just have saw that with with. And the funny thing is, I'm the one that was thinking Suarez would have a hard time to play throughout this season. Suarez has been fine. Yeah, they got to right. manage his minutes a little bit, give him a break here and there. But overall, he hasn't been injured. And here it is, like Messi, who just walks around on the field, is pulling hamstrings. Yeah. Well, and Messi does do a lot when he's in he there. Does, I mean, he does, but he uh, walks. He's not he He's walks. not running a whole lot. He's just magically in the right place at, all the time, right? And he usually doesn't defend either unless he backtracks. He did backtrack for one that somebody took the ball away from him. I don't know if he saw that. He backtracked all the way, followed him, and took it's the rare, ball away though. from him. That's yeah. rare. But he did that because he was just like, oh, he's like, oh, no, you didn't. You didn't just try taking the ball away from me. And he's like, he wasn't going to go down like that. He took the ball back. You know, question, though, um, if we lose. So they're already talk. There's already people crying for Tata's head. If we lose Champions Cup. Are his days numbered? I think um, if he brings uh, if he wins a major, the Major League Soccer uh, trophy. He'll be good if MLS Cup is, uh, you know, hoisted up. I think is is I think. So you're saying he gets the season no matter what. I think so. If he wins one trophy, I think he's through, even if it's League's Cup, because League's Cup uh, assures that we're going to be that next year we're going to be in the uh, in this tournament again. So we get another chance again. if we. Yeah. So. Part of me, I mean, I really, I know a lot of people are anti League's Cup right now. If you're following. Uh, the lower division soccer, which um, I've been, you know, following a little bit more lately. Uh, there's a lot of p fans of the lower division, um, or you know, that that obviously love the Open Cup. 
right? And because the Open Cup is not getting the respect from MLS, be partially to blame, League's Cup is part of the reason the the congestion of the schedules, right? And so I like the uh, more money uh, cup, right? More money. And so people, people, uh, uh, you know, kind of angry at the League's Cup because of what the effects it's having on the Open Cup, right? But we won the League's Cup, so I really want to win it again. I mean, you know, get a back-to-back -back on that would be pretty cool. It's Then it's kind of like, hey, man, it's the Inter-Miami Cup. Right. I, I think uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, yeah, I think that tournament, uh, any, I think any trophy is going to save Tata. Uh, no trophy is probably going to put him in the doghouse. Let's, speaking of, of this coming game, um, let's get rid of that. Bring up this, um, and let me get rid of that. So this is thanks to uh, there. You know, there. So there. Okay. So we. I'm sure have all heard there was a bit of a fight, a bit of a tussle after the Monterey game that involved Messi, Tata, Jordi Alba, and and the Monterey coach. And there was audio of this that has been leaked. And and Messi and Co. Uh, the Twitter uh, people, um, they they translated some of this, I guess. And uh, interesting, interesting stuff here because you know, Monterey filed a complaint against uh, against us, saying that uh, basically Messi was was you know ready to hit him. He says he says here, Ed, Messi wanted to fight with me. I don't think he wanted to hit me because if he did, he would have just hit me. He had me in a had me a CM centimeter away and put his fist next to my face. Mm. You know what oh was God. what was Messi so mad about? Now I I I know that before the game, the Monterey coach made some comments about. Hey, we got to watch these referees because Concacaf really wants Messi in the in the final, right? Because it's good for business. So he made some comment, but that comment alone cannot be enough to piss off Messi that much. That's kind of like he should be used to that. Is there anything more to it that you're aware of, or anybody in the chat? I mean, what what other than him calling out, you know, saying, "Hey, you know, Concacaf wants him in the finals," and you know he's right. They do want him in the finals, <laughs> so right. he's not wrong. But I think, I think that was just Monterey posturing so they can, you know, so they could throw it out there and you know okay, throw but some doubt. You know how, how lately everybody just says, you know, oh the elections were rigged, you know stuff like that, just to, you know, throw it out there so that people could start believing that that's how it is. Well, I think that's how it is in this case. They're just, you know, they cry wolf, and uh, you know, and it might work on their favor, which you know that's what they're trying to do. You know, it's part of the narrative, Peter Brown. Yeah. I was just curious on what really got him so mad. Here, the, the next quote here, it says, when I'm at the door to the locker room, I see Messi three meters from where I am. I approach him, the coach, to ask for a photo, which is funny. His security in good spirit stops me and notice Messi is heated. Right then the referees were coming in. Messi gets in their face and tells them off. And next to him was Tata Martino. Both were very out of pocket. If we did that, they'd send us to hell. <laughs> I don't know how good this translation is. But yeah, yeah, very colorful. Very colorful. It is very colorful. Um, so, I mean, funny thing is, will will there? I mean, look, if if you if Messi's going at the referees, we've seen players in MLS get uh you know fined and benched for several games uh recently uh for yeah. doing that kind of thing now i don't yeah, imagine you, they're going to do that to messi but yeah you, you got to read the next part because i think right. it's hilarious the next quote here and reading this uh partially because in case you can't see it or if you're listening to audio only officials from concacaf were there and told them if we were to do that they'd kick us all out when I say that, Tata Martino, who was going into the locker room, turned around and started yelling at me. And Messi appeared and wanted to eat me alive. His security approached but didn't do anything because I didn't react. The dwarf was possessed. He had the face of the devil. He put his fist next to my face. Who do you think you are? 
But because I didn't look at him, I was looking away. I never answered back. It made things worse. Well, he looks away because you don't look at the devil, right? You can't look at the devil, right? Or is that Medusa? Uh-huh. You can't look at Medusa. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and then he says, uh, and, and Tata Martino, what a poor dummy. I had him in front of me telling me, fool, you're going to cry. Fool, you're going to cry. What a dummy. Now, I, I, don't, I, I assume this is accurate. I, you know, I, I, even if it's not, it's pretty funny to play around with, thanks to Messi and co. on Twitter. Yeah, but I I just think uh, you know I I don't know if it's accurate. I didn't see uh, the report in Spanish uh, either. But now I, I wish you would have uh, told me about this one because I definitely or I think you did send it to me, but I just didn't read it. It's too long. You yeah, know how yeah, we well, are. Now. Well, the, the the tweet also has the audio in it that you can listen mm-hmm. to. But obviously for me, the audio doesn't help me at all because I don't understand it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so there's that. You know, I I it. Oh, here here uh, Francisco who listen. I apparently listened to it. He says, it's accurate, word by word. Wow, look at Francisco. Yeah, wow. And, and he, he continues on saying, uh, yeah, this got leaked by Nico Sanchez's private WhatsApp group. Someone in the group leaked it. It's a good translation. He heard it. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, uh, is something going to come out of it? I don't think anything is going to come out of it. At this stage, I mean, they want, uh, you know, they, they, they sanction Inter-Miami. That's uh, 50000 you know, of fans that aren't going to get to see him. They want to make the money. Uh, they wouldn't and- sanction Inter Miami in that scenario. I, I mean, you could finance financially, but what you would do in that case is you basically say, Messi, you can't play, and maybe Tata, you can't coach. All right. Because you, yeah. you know, but again, do they want to do that? But look, if you take Messi out of this, if you, if it was the, if it was the other way around, we would be yelling right here. I know I would. I would have a fun with it. We would oh, be yeah. yelling to off with their head, off with their head. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. We would, yeah, we would be like a bloody murder. You know, we'd be yelling to the four winds, Peter Brown. Yeah, this ain't right. How dare you? All that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, Francisco also says, and I agree with this: Concacaf won't dare to suspend anyone. <laughs> oh no, no. And the, the, I, I think. It's, Hoping for a miracle in Monterrey, but it's so tough, Peter. It is. It, it's it's going to be a real hard game. It, it's you know if if they do end up making a miracle, well, I'm going to be incredibly surprised. And then maybe you know the people in Mexico will say, mm, "There's something funny going on." Maybe it is. If rigged. we win, they will definitely cry conspiracy a hundred percent. You know, it just reminds me of of how Brazilians are when they watch the World Cup. And I remember several World Cups ago. I don't remember which one it was. It might have been the World Cup where France beat Brazil in the final, something like that. So it was a while ago. But I remember all the Brazilians I knew, including my wife, said that the refs were all paid off. They were all paid off, you know? And so, uh, um, you know, it'll it'll be the same thing. Hey, um... Super chat from Caesar. All right. You don't want to anger. You don't want angry Messi on the pitch. Ask the Netherlands. Thank you for the super chat, Caesar. You want to support Caesar. the channel? Super chats yeah. are always uh, there and open. And we appreciate it. Um, why is this still playing? My my confetti oh, is still okay. going. Is that my confetti still won't stop. Ah, ah, Ah. <laughs> I gotta, fi- I gotta figure out how to stop oh, this. It's coming at me, man! It's just nonstop. Oh, I don't even remember where it is. I have it on a oh. button. Oh Why don't we man, just do this? Why don't we just do you this? Got, we'll that's just. Pretty, that's pretty cool. I'll throw it at. Uh, oh darn it! It's still uh, happening. I guess it's gonna. We're gonna have to do. Uh, it's gonna be on there for the rest of the show now. No, it's not. I got it. Okay. <laughs> but now look, it's frozen. It's literally frozen in midair. <laughs> There we go. Uh, yeah, um, angry messy. That is the good thing about all this. And that's when when I first saw the, that there was a confrontation and all that kind of stuff. That was my first thought. And I think I chatted to you guys. That's what we need. We need angry messy. That's, that's the only uh, yeah. thing that I think can help win this game. 
It, it, it has to be. He's going to probably have a, a message to uh, the players once the game, you know, before the game in Monterrey. And they're probably trying to get everybody, you know, pumped up about that game. Uh, I, it's going to be tough, man. But, you know, we'll see, I guess, if uh, they were able to pull it off. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of people crying in Monterrey if that happens. Oh, yeah. Mr. Crab says, uh, let's put this up a little bit. Messi coming back versus Colorado, of all teams, makes you wonder if he could have played Monterey in the first leg. <coughs> you know, is it is just a few days more rest that much of a difference to a, to a hamstring? Could he have probably played? I mean, I think at the end of the day, if he could have, he would have, right? Because I think, like we've talked about, the priority is this tournament. And Tata said that from the very beginning of the season. So if he yeah, was available, he would have done it. And it looked like we were going to get away with the result anyway if it wasn't for the red card. Um, it's the red card I, that did that. It, 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 I think we would have probably won that game, uh, or at least it would have been a 1-1 tie. Um, but, it, you know, we would have had a better chance. There could have been a better chance, Peter Brown, but, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, hopefully we, make, we, we could still survive in that tournament. But that's the positive, is that Monterey controlled that game. But we held our own. We were in it. Yeah. You know, without Messi. They, the, our defense looked much better. I know we're, we were complaining about our defense all the time. I saw that Louis, Louis, Louis was in there uh, complaining that we have too many midfielders, not enough defenders. We all wanted another center back. We didn't get it. You could, bra- you could blame Chris Henderson. But, um, you know, at the same time, you say uh, we have too many midfielders. We don't necessarily have that many experienced midfielders. And the majority of our midfielders now, it seems like, look, they're all young guys. I mean, we're bring, you're bringing yeah. in Sunderland and stuff like that. That's not the guy you really want to start. You want to bring him yeah. as a, somebody in the second half off the bench, you know, stuff like that. You don't necessarily want to start the young guys. You know, we, you know the players like Farias, that was supposed to kind of be your messy replacement, I think, the way I looked at it. Midfield slash forward. And, um, and well, he's not available. So, but... How good has as Cello been since coming in? I think that kid look has looked really, really good. Yeah, and that's another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, when he came in for the Colorado game, it just seemed like, uh, uh, you know, they were just we, we were basically playing with the line of three in the back. Uh, they were going up, but as a matter of fact, they looked more like a line of two because Negri was going up, and there was a moment where I saw. I don't know if you were able to notice from where you were at, but the, uh, Tata was telling Negra to stay back because he was going up and he was all yeah. hurt towards the end. But he still, he's, it's, you know, he wanted to keep going up up, up top. Even though uh, Jordi Alba was there, he wanted to keep going up too. Jordi would, you know, would replace, you know, go backwards a little bit or whatever. But Jordi wanted to go up as well. So, I mean, it uh, it looked like a lot of fun. Too bad Negri looked like he was hurt towards the end so that's another guy that might be hurt for for the next coming game yeah <laughs> more injuries um mike v i don't know what why they're talking about this but i thought i thought it's funny because being a rocker mike v says the coming on the pitch song for inter miami should be enter sandman metallica enter sandman uh- I like that. Why, yeah. why, why enter Sandman? Just because you like the song, or is it because we f- were kind of asleep in the beginning of the game? <laughs> <laughs> they would dare play a rock song in that stadium. I don't think they've ever played anything uh, rock. The, the, the closest thing was the national anthem during the Monterey game. How good was that? How good was that kid? This, uh, you know, I think what it was he autistic or whatever. I don't care what he yeah. was. He was a really good guitar player. And right when they brought him out, if you were watching the live stream that I was doing, I was like, I started saying, oh, is he going to do the Jimi Hendrix thing? Is he going to do it? Oh, yeah, he is. But he also Mm -hmm. put a little uh, finger tapping in there, a little Eddie Van Halen finger tapping in there as well. It was that kid was really good. That was funny, too, because on the in the vlog, I also mentioned, oh, Peter Brown must really love. Yeah. Must have loved. Yeah. Mike V says they played a Taylor Swift one. I don't remember that. My daughter would be happy. I, I try to block those off as much as I can. We're Swifties in this house, Ed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, I have to be because of my daughter. I have no choice. Uh, I have no well, choice. Well, hopefully she'll show up to one of the games. I mean, they had Daddy Yankee show up. Or, uh, one of the UFC uh, uh, 
Fighters was also there. I saw that he took a picture with uh, with uh, some of the players, with uh, Messi. Uh, couple more chat. I- oh, we got we got we got um here. Wait, this has to go first. Oh, I'm not gonna play the sound effect again because, well, you know. Do it, man. Do it. Don't be afraid, Peter Brown. But it doesn't turn off. I got. Th- I know how to turn it off. Um. Caesar back with a two dollar super chat. Should we give Dos Santos some playing time? So that's assume you're. If you're saying that, you're you're thinking that um, that calendar is the problem. No, I think he was pretty solid. And I don't think uh, calendar is a problem. I don't. I I would say no. We should not <laughs> give. Tank would uh, probably agree with him. Tank hates calendar. Loves everybody but calendar. Yeah. I don't think Tank likes calendars in general. Maybe he doesn't like you know the days of the week or anything like that. Yeah, but I think Tank used to be a keeper back in the day, so that's mm. I think it might you know envy you know that they didn't call him up for this team and they got calendar starting. Just just throwing it out there. All right, uh, we got somebody here checking in from Papua. Papua, am yeah. I saying it right? Ah, Dan nice. Han Turlock. So I'm saying good morning from where he is. Nice. Thanks for joining us, man. One world, one goal feels that with Dos Santos, he has nice feet and distribution, which is critical. His feet might be better, but I think Calendar's better at a shot stopping. I'm not saying Dos Santos is bad, um, but 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 between the two, I th- I feel better with Calendar. But right. Calendar has made mistakes with his feet, and that's for sure. And that's where DeSanto seems to be a little bit better. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. So what are we looking at, Peter Brown? I'm looking at chats. I'm looking at chats. Uh, you know, uh, one more. Where's Bruno? Uh, he was here earlier. <clears throat> I'm so yeah. Richard, he Richard said, said he's sorry he missed the live show. This is the live show, Richard. You might be talking about the live, the the live uh, you know, broadcast we did. Maybe from the game. Maybe. Uh, Chris ahead. Arjun uh, feels that Calendar is just not vocal enough with his defenders. He needs to be more of a commanding presence. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, here, here. Let's talk about this because somebody uh, put this question up. Let me uh, do this. This pop pop. What do you think about uh, Afonso? So Guru is asking, Afonso? What do you think about Afonso? This is the guy, Ed, that mm-hmm. he came into what? Um the 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 Monterey game and you weren't happy. Well, yeah. Uh he came in, Costas came in. I think uh if we were there, you know, we wanted to really um you know win that game. Uh I think uh, Campana would have been better up there. Uh you know, it just didn't make sense to me. And that's one of the reasons why people were talking about, you know, they, they brought in these guys that make so little compared to the other the uh, the other player, the Mexican players or whatever. Sure. Um, and and I, it was, to me, it just seemed that and, and it's probably one of the reasons why, if it's true that Campana wants to leave uh, Inter Miami, it's because, you know, they gave this kid priority. I mean, I don't know if he's better. Than Campana, I mean, but I think Campana's- in that game in in that Monterey game, I would have put in Campana, but. Afonso is looking good. I mean, he scored uh, against Colorado. And on the Inter-Miami two games, I think he scored like four goals in two games, something like that. I know he scored two goals yeah. in the game that I went to. They played today as well, but I, I thought about going, but I wasn't feeling very good today, so I didn't go. But um, Afonso looks like he might be a good player moving forward. I mean, yeah. it's a good replacement yeah. for somebody like Robbie Robinson, right? Because yeah, but it was a time to have him. I mean, in an important game that that you know this that game was, you would imagine Tata would put in more experienced players, right? That might have but I mean, but impact. but Afonso as a even, whole. But what are your thoughts on Afonso more, as a whole? I well, I think he was good. I, at least this last game against uh, right. Um, you know, uh, what are they called? Uh, Colorado. I think he was he was better. Uh, he was definitely better. But I just, you know, question him coming in uh, for a CONCACAF game, 
where I think even Borjan would have probably been better because he's he's, a, he's the point guy. You know, just throw a center in. You know, he's good with his head, and he probably could have scored. I mean, the, I just you know I just question Tata's. Uh, you know, he's he's an experienced uh, coach, but God, man, maybe he's just. It's funny because my wife even said, "What the hell's he doing? He should have been right. already, he should have been already out uh, getting a coffee or something." I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. He said in Spanish, "It's funnier in Spanish." She should be getting said, coffee, huh? He should, yeah. Okay, okay, what's that old guy doing? She said he should be already going and getting a coffee or something. She said something like that. And I was just cracking out because I was like, well, that is funny. I'm going to use that one in the Spanish show. Well, I used it here, but it doesn't translate as well. But in Spanish, it's so much funnier. Well, speaking of, you know, uh, we, we've got this young kid in, in with the team right now. And I was just scanning real quick because I couldn't remember exactly. But um, Inter-Miami just recently procured what another international spot right didn't they 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 paid somebody a hundred and fifty thousand what was it maybe montreal or somebody we paid a mm-hmm. uh, hundred fifty thousand dollars and got another uh international spot now we're maxed out with players we don't have so room going? huh yeah who's, who's go- going, who's going? Yeah. Who, we, who we getting rid of because it's clearly you're not getting rid of of somebody like afonso who's new and cheap um Campana may not be happy, but um, they'll hold on to him. They they'll hold on to him out. until there's a right deal because there's a lot of money invested in him. Yeah, yeah. Right? So who, who I'm curious, who who goes? Because if if they plan on making a move, like, you know, the, 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 the transfer window is closing in like two weeks or something. So they got to make a deal fast. If not, they're going to have to wait till summer, right? But And they could hold off, hold that international spot for summer. But, you know... Obviously, you're getting rid of somebody, and and my thought was, but then you wouldn't need the international spot, right? I was thinking you could look at getting rid of Negri because while he's good, he hasn't been playing for a very long time, so we've kind of got used to him not being here. He makes a good yeah. chunk of money. Get rid of him, um, sell him off, whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm curious who who who's out of here because it's not going to be one of the kids, whether you like them yeah. or not. Mr. Glass, maybe I don't, but he doesn't make that much either, does he? He's uh, I think he's a little over three hundred thousand, somewhere in that neighborhood. I can look it up, but um, but can't question? Can you offload a injured player? Hmm. I don't know. That's 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 something to. We'd have to look at the roster. Uh, yeah, right. we definitely have defenders, man, but. Uh, there's been talk about uh, the Paraguayan. Uh, he's a, an attacking midfielder. Um, what's his name? Another midfielder to make make Louis happy. Rojas, I think, is his name. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Ro- yeah, Rojas. Uh, Paraguayan guy that they've been talking to, and it looks like that's probably the guy that's coming in. But he's an attacking midfielder, and, and for for Pete's sake, Pete, <laughs> why are they doing? Why do? Why are we the only ones? Why are the fans? I mean, we're not. Uh, yeah, I like the transition. Why are the fans the only ones that seem to realize that we need a defender, a central defender, a hardcore central defender uh, back there? And and the coach and, and Chris Henderson, you know, it just doesn't seem like they compute. Like like everybody see, else can see it. We're we're making claims. Making a claim like that is basically calling out their their intelligence. We're smarter than they are. We're the 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 armchair quarterbacks. We know better, and we don't. You and me, at least. You know the other internet people. Everybody on the internet. You know my favorite thing is if you don't if if you uh, don't agree with somebody, they're like, "Well, you don't know football. You must not have played. You don't know football." People calling you out for that kind of stupid stuff just because you don't agree with their opinion. I think it's always funny, but in this in this regard. I think Chris Henderson is way more, um, you know, experienced and knowledgeable than we are. He knows. He knows what they need. But, you know, the, he's also working with the coach and what he wants. And maybe you've got Tata that's sitting there saying, no, I want to congest the midfield. Let's, let's, you know, we congest the midfield. We can work with what we have, you know, uh, stuff like that. But, I mean, I agree we need one. But I just, I, I think... I think Chris knows too. <laughs> may he may not be delivering it, and I'm sure he's got his reasons. 
and he won't tell us. But maybe they're waiting for the summer. They've got somebody lined up for the summer. Yeah. Um, um, and and the way that they're playing, I mean, they're I think they're still in third place in the general standings. So they're with the win pl- right. playoff uh, uh, position, you know. Uh, and and I think uh, at least listening from uh, Apple TV, a lot of them were saying. Does Inter Miami go for the supporter shield? No, they don't need to because they know they could win short tournaments. Right. So you know, the, the, I think what they're going to do is just you know they're going to sacrifice some games, you know, and uh, and as long as they make the playoff, they get a chance, Peter. Agreed. Agreed. That's all they have to do. But keep in mind, everybody's talking like, "Hey, we're still at the top of the table. We also have played one more game than everybody else." That's true. So that that's a negative. So just keep that in mind. Um, we got to end this, but uh, one thought thought I thought was funny. Oh yeah, Mister Crab saying Antoine Griezmann in the summer. That's not happening. Not not yet. Not yet. But um, um, somebody they got to bring in somebody. They 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 procured an international roster spot for some reason. They didn't just give up money for nothing. They do have yeah. some plan somewhere. But anyways, something's up. That's it. All right. Well, I mean that was a fun show. Eight oh one. It's time to go. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. And But, Ed, what are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, guys, we'll be doing the same thing. We're going to be breaking it down with uh, everybody's favorite uh, bear, Marco Aloso Donoso. We're going to do, be doing the same thing in Spanish. He is the expert uh, PlayStation uh, player. He's been 20 years of experience taking teams, you know, making them champions in the Champions League and uh, World Cup. You name it. So he's going to be breaking it down, telling you what's up with Tata, why he's wrong. So, mm. uh, John, mañana en español, Football Miami TV ES. All right. That should be fun. Uh, you know, uh, the the preeminent armchair quarterback, Marco, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready. People actually like what he has to say sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes. Not all the time. <laughs> sometimes they don't. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.